Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week. Elon Musk has been in the news for, well, a lot as of late, but have you kept up with this company, Neuralink? It is one of several companies like Syncron or Paradromics who are working on a type of technology called brain-computer interface. To date, this engineering feat has been focused on helping people with movement limiting or control conditions, like when someone is paralyzed, getting their brain signal to do an action like turn on music or control a robotic arm. There is some very crucial engineering needed to make this technology work. So let's talk about the four main engineering components of this amazing technology. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. The first step of Habesi is to read someone's brain, not the physiological signals like heart rate or blood pressure, but signals from our central nervous system. The central nervous system is like an air traffic control tower. It is the central command center for your body. It processes and analyzes information coming in and out as well as communicates back what actions to take. Whereas an air traffic controller sends information back by talking on radio or sending information over computers, your central nervous system does this through neurons. Neurons are cells that are constantly working, but also get activated when you think about wanting to do something like walking. You don't feel your body telling itself to walk, but behind the scenes, the neurons are firing throughout your body. In the case of someone with paralysis, they may think about walking, but one part of the neuron process fails. What BCIs do is capture the electrical signal from the electrochemical processes generated from the thought, even if the end action like walking doesn't happen. Non-invasive BCIs are devices that are placed outside the brain to read when many neurons are firing. On the other extreme, invasive BCIs are implanted into the brain tissue so they can read the activity of individual or groups of neurons. After the BCI has captured the electrical signals from the brain, it uses computer processing and machine learning to process and label the electrical signals. Just capturing the electrical signals from our central nervous system by itself doesn't mean anything because there are multiple brain signals going on at the same time. Hello, daydreaming while eating lunch, anyone? So for the brain waves that are recorded, how do they know what a brain wave relates to? Signal processing is about trying to label the brain signals by telling someone to think of a movement, move your hand, move your feet, and then recording the brain waves. The brain activity is then fed into machine learning algorithms to find statistical significance and patterns to extrapolate which of these signals is related to what the person was thinking about. They can also determine someone's baseline brain activity related to automatic processes like breathing, which is important to understand as you start to use BCIs to drive multiple actions. There are different types of machine learning techniques being tested to find the best way to decipher the relevant electrical signals. Once a pattern is labeled, in the future, it can decode what the pattern is and know it's associated with thinking about a specific task. The computer also has to translate this task into electronic signals, which we'll discuss in the next section. Now that the command is deciphered, the information is relayed to the external device. One of the main distinctions of BCIs from other types of technology like neuromodulation is the communication between the user thinking about what they want the device to do and then the device accepting the command initiated from the user. Said another way, neuromodulation takes what's automatically happening in the brain and then tries to adjust what's happening to create a better outcome, such as eliminating signs of PTSD or depression. For BCIs, the control of the device is intentional. A person is specifically thinking about an action their body won't do naturally, like moving a computer mouse, so that the brain waves can be captured, translated, and then do the command it's asking. The signals to the external devices can take a few forms, digital codes, voltage changes, current changes, but ultimately any device you wanna use with a BCI has to be able to accept an electronic signal. For example, a common LAN you plug into the wall would require some sort of a control center or smart home device to translate the computer command. Depending on which technology the lamp is connected to, the command to turn on the light would be sent through a series of binary numbers or a command for a specific voltage threshold. Now that the external device has received the command, it's time to do the thing we've been waiting for. Turn on that light, move that robotic arm, close the blinds. This is called sensory feedback and provides the user confirmation of what they thought led to the intended action. Not only is this step important because it's the objective of these devices, it's also an important element of trust and learning for the user. As an example, have you ever tried to hold a plank? Holding a plank is definitely a physical challenge, but holding a plank for a few minutes feels more mental than physical. Or maybe you got really upset but didn't want to cry, so how to will yourself to hold back tears. All of these are us telling our brain to do something to control our body. Similarly, when someone is connected to a BCI, they are willing their mind to relay a task like how we will ourselves to keep the plank or don't. Because the person plays an active role in creating the brain activity required to do the task, the technology of the BCI improves as someone learns from the feedback, like how to better regulate their brain activity or ignore distractions. How this feedback is relayed is completely dependent on the external device. But I wouldn't be surprised if technology design in the future is influenced by the desire cool to be a way to help BCIs. others and apply your engineering skills at the same time. If you want additional information or to learn about some of the history of BCIs, make sure to check out the links on our page. Have a great weekend.